Good day, class. Um, I welcome you all to yet another online class. My name is Paxton Sito, and I believe this is class HRTTP 121. Let me just quickly share my screen with you guys so that we can start off, of course, on the right foot so that everybody can see what is happening here on my screen. But also, guys, I do understand that there's been problems and challenges with regards to um, having to log into um the recordings but don't worry if you have missed the class then the contents of this production will then be made available for you guys so this week 10 guys um on the roadmaps you guys will be fulfilling the roles of directors on set i know we um delved deeper into what directors and producers do the difference between the different kinds of producers we've got your line producers your field producers your executive producers your content producers your creative producers and so forth and likewise with directors there's so many roles that that director has to do to in order to tell the story but most importantly so some directors happen to become writers so you uh, both both the writer and the director. So you play multiple roles. The role of telling the story visually so, and also carrying all the aspects of visually telling that story, having to cast uh, different kinds of people to play certain characters, having to cast cinematographers being in charge of the pre-production stage, the production stage, as well as the post-production stage. So as a director, you are basically the coach of overseeing and analyzing that every Port an important aspect of the story is therefore then told. So by fulfilling this role as a director on set, guys, you will be at adhering to all the required responsibilities by understanding the role of the, uh, the director. So you guys will be then performing this task on your own in a full set studio. I know that the last time in our previous semester, you guys have took on those roles and we did some exercises where um, different people were taking on different roles. So if you're a director, you're directing a show, you're directing an interview and so forth. So this is the roadmap. I believe that this particular roadmap uh, you guys are familiar with. This guys, um, with regards to um, having to actually play the role of a director also includes setting up necessary documents, director's documents, uh, the production documents, the, the film sets, the 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 floor plans and so forth so also this um deals with auditioning and managing the set in the studio as well as shooting as well as recording so we'll get deeper into what the roles of a director actually does um, in the quintessential parts of this particular lesson. So the lesson's outcomes was for you guys to be able to understand the role of a producer and a director and different responsibilities of a film director, and also to understand the need of necessary documents as the directors are responsible for and learn how to audition actors, record audio, as well as interpret scripts. But before we get into the interpretation of scripts, the most important part of why we need a director is basically the story. The reason filmmakers come together as part of one crew is, tell, is to tell one important story. And the story is the most driving force and the most important element part. There are certain elements of VFX in the production and the editing, as well as cinematography, visually to bring that story to life. And we have the sound recording and sound designers who actually come and uh, record fully sounds and add some dialogue and make enhancing um, qualitative sounds for your particular productions. But before we talk and address uh, all these kinds of elements, guys, um, I wanted to talk about the roles of what different producers and different directors actually do. So the responsibilities, guys, of a film director and a producer is to bring the leadership as well as the vision to a project, as well as to exercise the control and authority during the production process. Now your roles will include exhibiting and managing influential uh, industry context because you do know and understand the concept that your network is your net worth. So having to form and merge a qualitative um, relationship with different stakeholders being the casting directors, the um, the casting agencies, the, the different actors that you'd want to then bring into your production, the uh, auditioning these people and working on sources of materials and hiring, hiring the creative team as well as organizing the money and making this idea into a qualitative film is what your responsibility as a director is for. 
Now, guys, it's very important to understand that a good film producer as well as a director is more, is, or rather involved in more than a single project's development stage. So it's the most extended phrase. And as a film producer, you need to be committed from the very beginning. So as a film director and a producer, you have to manage everything between the departments. So when a project grows from an idea to a film, as well as a show, what you need to do is to hire certain script writers. Uh, maybe you want... Uh, you fancy multiple script writers so that um, creative juices are multiplied. Yeah, you are responsible for sourcing the material and the qualitative technical competencies of different people who will be involved in your production. Right. So uh, this, of course, also after finding a new project uh, precedes the development stage. And what you do as a director is you rely on your relationships as well as your contacts with other production companies, producers, directors, creative teams. And in addition to that, guys, some of the film producers are in contact with investors, actors, agents, cinematographers, as well as costume designers. The reason you have to work um, and create meaningful business relationships in the creative economy because we are always working together and it's a very small world. So having a great network of people um, helps you with regards to certain elements that you'd want to bring into the production. If you have a good relationship with this casting agency, your ideal actors that you perhaps maybe want to cast in your production would be easier to obtain. Uh, the money is easier to obtain whether you have great relationships with studios and your delivery is always on point and you always give exceptional work. So um, some of these pre-production responsibilities and the external responsibilities that you guys uh, um, have to start working on or during the pre-production stage is to have to organize investments because um, a, a film at the end of the day needs a lot of money so you need to organize the investments um, from financing it and 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 gathering the creative team to help package as well as pitch to different production companies and studios so that you can sell your project so after having written the script as a director and you have the vision and the idea for it, the next step is to develop it and also sell the project. That's why we implement the process of pitching in your classes so that you are able to pitch your ideas. They are refined and you get to understand where in the scale of your production you are creatively so that everybody is on board so that you are able to sell the, the script. Um, having to sell the script is also another creative aspect that you have to carry on doing as a creative director or rather as an um, executive producer in a production. So as a successful film producer and a director, you will get approval from any studios or production company or arrange financing from investors from the launch so some of these responsibilities guys is bringing the creative team hiring line producers providing advice and signing off big creative decisions and managing uh, every logistics as well as business operations sometimes on set there's certain um, creative clashes right so you'd find creative classes between uh, the producer and the director maybe perhaps the director feels that one character is more important than the other in during the casting or, or the auditioning process. And, and one of these things are called conflict resolution. So as a production manager, you need to understand how to manage conflict, how to deal and maneuver through um, um, uh, great communication and effective communication skills to be able then to address certain creative challenges where the pre-production and the production process is concerned. And these are some of the leadership roles that you need to then assume as a creative director and as a producer of a show. So um, how does one become a creative uh, producer in the film industry? So film producers often gain experience from working across the film industry. For some example, some of the producers start off as actors, some of them as writers, some of them as agents, some of them to gain experience as, as studio executives. The second step, guys, in becoming film directors and producers is to have secondary education. You need to be able to know exactly what you are doing in either film school or business school, just like you are students of broadcast journalism and radio production. However, one of the best ways of education for film producers is through production. So um, whenever you have spare time, volunteer in production companies to be able to learn, grow, and, and, and exponentially add to your resume and to your profile um, the kind of work that you have done. And this also leads to the third step, which gives you experience through some of the internships, uh, radio stations, television networks to find um, 
and you learning things about filmmaking and 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 through um certain investment opportunities that they they might offer so the principal characteristics that is needed for um job um uh, as a producer guys i don't know if my screen is still sharing let me just see if, oh, okay no um <clears throat> some of the principal um characteristics needed for a film producer job guys um here as you can see here these bulletin forms the love and passion to produce films or tv shows um, you can always see a cheap material when it is seen on screen. You can see when passion is missing from a project. So first of all, I believe, and I think many people around the world believe that the point where your talent meets your passion is where you find your happiness and that's where you excel. So make sure it's something that you have a strong passion for because if you're not passionate about something, then you will not do it well. You will not have a quest to do excellence and apply excellence in every or all the departments and areas of development um, during the production process. Another thing, guys, a network of things. So a strong project management and organizational skills. What are we referring to by that? We're referring to aspects such as emotional intelligence, such as leadership roles and skills. What leadership roles and skills and organizational skills do you have? Do you have the ability to communicate to people without your ego getting in the way? Do you have, can you manage your time well? Which, I mean, in the creative economy and the film production, one of the essential factors is time. Can you be able to manage uh, a group of people with regards to time? Can you sell your idea qualitatively to every piece and part and parcel of um, creative um, crew members in the crew to be able to understand the script from a visual perspective, from an audio perspective, and through all aspects of the three components of, or, or rather the five components of communication. Do you understand the, the narrative structure? Do you understand the performance aspect? What are aesthetics? What is composition? How do you understand composition? And fifth, how can you, as a film producer, source finances and creatively merge and, and, and forge uh, meaningful relationships with different people? So do you have project management skills? So it's worthy to start uh, practicing these uh, management skills and storytelling skills in different areas of your life. You can, if you want to, volunteer during your spare time to work with production companies, take a course in project management, research about what project management is, what it entails, and how you can best um, implement it into your production. Storytelling skills. What are we talking about when we talk about storytelling skills and problem solving abilities and creative thinking? Guys, storytelling is about uh, creative thinking and they go hand in hand. Stories are meant to enlighten people. Stories are meant to entertain people. Stories are meant to impart lifelong lessons. Stories are meant to educate people. Stories serve an informative role. Stories serve to connect with people on various spheres of relevance, be it emotionally so, be it psychologically, be it conceptually, be it... Um, be, be it politically so. So these are some of the storytelling and skills that we are referring to. Can you tell stories? Are you passionate about telling stories? And what kind of stories are important for you and to you to be telling to the audience? What kind of stories? Um, storytelling skills also goes hand in hand with the kind of stories that you choose to tell. What do you believe as a student of broadcast media and journalism and as a student of radio and as a student who understands narrative structure? What is going on around your world and what important stories do you believe your roles is to play in telling these stories, not only in the South African landscape, but also telling these stories to global scales, taking these stories to Botswana, taking these African stories to Namibia, taking these stories abroad to the United States of America. How successful are you in telling these particular stories? Experience in business. It's always, um, it's always advisable to learn the creative aspect as well and nurture it creatively and also merge it with the business aspect of, of how film operates, right? So if you only understand the creative side, you, you can understand why most artists uh, end up making it big and then end up dying as paupers. You need to understand how do you ensure your film productions? What is intellectual property? 
How best can you protect your movies? How do you create revenue and profit streams for your production? Because the creative economy is solely um, one of the greatest contributors to the GDP, GDP or the gross domestic product as well as the gross national product. How do you understand your role as a filmmaker and as a television production practice? How do you contribute to the national gross domestic product and the gross national product? How do you plan to make a money out of your production? Because it's not only about telling the story, but it's also earning a living and making a livelihood out of telling these impactful stories. So think about these things and think about how business um, skills could come in handy in terms of sourcing for finances, knowing where to source for finances, knowing how to sell your ideas and so forth. Now, these are persistence and numerous contexts. Um, persistence is one of the things, guys, uh, assertiveness, confidence, which are part of the emotional intelligence aspect. If you have assertiveness, if you are persistent and you are more passionate about your project and confidence and you have persuasive skills uh, as a salesperson because you believe in the vision, your turn is then to convince the team and to show the team and the creative crew how the vision can come into life and then uh, qualitatively uh, exponentially multiply that when you are selling your pitches, when you are packaging this, whether you're writing it through a proposal, whether you're making a budget and whether you're distributing it and pitching to different um, various studios. So there are different degrees in accomplishing um, some of these statistics, guys. So um, that's the role of a producer, guys. Uh, that's a role of a director in a, in a, in a film production. Um, there's various opportunities which we'll take to about, and I want us now to talk about now deeper, delve deeper into, into um, what we call the auditioning process and what's the most important elements and aspects of telling the story. Remember guys, script writing is one element of telling a story. It's a story that is written on paper. So what is the most essential part of the story? one would say it's character. Remember the second aspect of communication is what we call performance. Performance involves characters, it involves their journeys as well as their goals. What do they want? What is it their end goals in the story? Uh, what is their journey and how are we following it and how are we telling this narrative of these characters? Because the characters drive the narrative forward. The characters are what we call or what we name or what we primarily need with within a story. So a story cannot take place without characters. Certain stories are plot driven, others are character driven. So decide what kind of story you want to tell. Is it character driven or is it plot driven? What obstacles, what challenges, what are some of the uh, greatest achievements that these, these characters actually want within the story? And how can you creatively tell that story within a visual medium? This is where the casting process comes in. Who is the relevant cast in person that you'd want to carry out the narrative of your story? Who's the best suited cinematographer or the director of photography to be able to capture the essence of these characters in film? So I'm going to just share with you guys a, um, a visual medium or a story with regards to certain Hollywood directors and how they actually go through the auditioning process, which is the most essential part of the production. Because when people go into cinemas and they go to theaters and they go and watch documentaries, the first thing they ask themselves is not who the director is. They don't care much about the cinematographer. They don't matter. It doesn't matter them much most about who did the sound design. Those are all great aspects of telling that story beautifully. Um, you think about behind the scenes, you think about editing and so forth. Those are secondary aspects and matters. What we care about as the audience members or as consumers of your entertainment pieces is who is involved in your story who is the main actor of your story. If you're going to cast the Leonardo DiCaprio as a lead actor of your story, people, you know that you're guaranteed a box office smash hit because Leonardo DiCaprio is associated with great movies. He's associated with branding. He's associated with knowing and understanding how to dwell within character, how to move beyond character. And we are guaranteed a great story. So these are some of the aspects of 
auditioning process as a director and as a producer you guys should be able to watch out for and do successfully when it comes to casting be it for your news television production shows who is the most suited and appropriate person to be presenting the news how are they most suited and what criteria are you using to them that let them fit within that particular production so let me just share with you guys this video so that you get um, a better um, insight into how the casting process goes in what goes into telling that story what's important with regards to that story and so forth so that um we can get deeper into um this particular lesson um but before we go into that guys um i want to share with you guys um the new brief that um is expected for you guys right so on the 11th of november 2022 i hope you guys can still see my screen here on friday the 11th um uh, of november you guys are then expected to send your final semester b brief uh, for the productions that you've sought in your first um, in your second semester part of which you were actually supposed to or which you have done on the 16th of september and submitted so guys um, I just want to go through with this brief um, with you guys so that you guys understand exactly what is needed from you guys. So the time that you guys have to submit is the 11th of November. It's on a Friday. You be aware and be um, mindful that call campus will be closing at midnight at exactly 11.59. So make sure that whenever you are submitting your documents, you submit your documents well before time. Guys, I had a very, very, very difficult time having to mark your scripts. Please follow the brief when it comes to uploading your material on Call Campus. Most of you guys did not send uh, <clears throat> the links to your YouTube links. Most of them I could not click on them. Most of you guys send the zip files to upload, which I could not open on Call Campus. So it makes my job difficult. And I hate having to penalize you guys and hate having to give you guys zeros um, for, for, for the content that I can't access. Because if I can't access this content, then I can't mark you guys. So please, let's start off with this brief and follow it step by step. On Call Campus, you have to upload the following documents in using Word or PDF document. First of all, your standard television cover page. Make sure that it's the correct cover page every single time that you're uploading a document. Do not compress documents into one folder Try to trying to make it easier. And I know that some of you guys are doing it to make it easier for me uh, and the marking process, but it doesn't make it easier. It just actually makes it harder and heinous for both you and I. So look out for that. Um, that's the standard television cover page, music cover sheet. Q sheet, as well as a reference page to your YouTube link. Guys, it's advisable that when you are submitting these documents on Call Campus, make sure that the reference list is also on your cover page so that I am able to access it. So follow these rules step by step, guys. You go to files, you click upload, you choose saved documents to upload, upload them one by one, be it the first one, the television cover page, the second one, the music cover sheet, as well as your one page reference page to your YouTube link. Please let's do that, guys. Now the brief that is expected from you guys um, and the independent learning hours in terms of support is 10 hours from, um, from the inception of this particular lesson. Um, you are given uh, a little less than a month to do that. So you have uh, approximately about uh, three to four weeks to do that and 10 independent working hours for you guys. So the brief then states, guys, remember as your first part, you were then directed to be able to produce a one minute news insert. And this as part of part two, guys, um, assessment, your group will be tasked to come up with a news breaking show concept the same news broking uh, concept. Now for your S1 assessment, which is this particular one, you have to complete your breaking news show by following these steps. So let's go through the steps with you guys before we get into, into the lesson. Guys, correctly set up and prepare your live area according to your set pre, uh, your preset floor plan, as well as your AV script. Remember, a live area, guys, is where you will be shooting live. It could be in the studio. It could be a, in a location, a desired location of your choice. But your floor plan must go hand in hand with what you guys are shooting. So don't just like create a floor plan and then 
um, say that your talent will be um, shooting outside when they're actually shooting inside. The floor plan is designed so that you guys are able then to see the visual aspect of where you'll be filming, how the lighting is going to be set up. And it saves you guys, apart from that, a lot of time in, with regards to um, actually shooting your productions and, and making them a qualitative reality. We'll get into the floor plan later and how um, to make that particular floor plan um, uh, later on during this lesson. But let me just continue with the brief so that um, we get, we, um, we keep moving, um, we keep moving well. Uh, great. Here's the brief. Great, guys. So that's the first aspect. The second aspect, this is where your news anchors will be broadcasting. Oh, well, like I said, the live area is where the news broadcasting anchors will be broadcasting. So that's the live area. And this live area, guys, um, is very important when you are creating um, an, um, a floor plan. Um, I like to use uh, uh, an app called Concepts. Use an app called Concepts. It has all, all the key elements and all the two frames and taskbars that will help you in creating a qualitative and high quality uh, based floor plan that 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 you don't have to write down so it's easy it's flexible to use i'll share with you guys a video on that um uh, shortly after we go through this 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 production so use i app guys it's called concepts you can go on google google play and download a, a concept um, an app called concepts so that you can create these floor plans right now shoot your anchors inserts using studio cameras and the production flow system. So guys, what I noticed in your productions is that most of you guys, what you guys did is you shot with different cameras. Some of you guys shot with your cell phones. Guys, this time, please use the studio cameras because it compromises upon the quality of what you guys are producing. So the quality is not good at the end of the day. The image is not well. And, 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 and your live script or your floor plan is not in conjunction with your AV script. So make sure that all these aspects are in order in this second aspect of your production. The third bulletin is to complete your news broadcasting insert by adding pre-shot field reporting insert. And we'll go into the example of what a pre-shot field reporting insert actually looks like. And this one uh, actually comes from your first production. So the ones that you shot, the one minute insert that you guys have shot, that serves as a pre-shot reporting insert. Your, you mix it all together in your final edit and then um, um, you get your complete news breaking show. So what you guys will be recording now is um, um, coming up with that news show concept uh, or, or continuing it from the last uh, project that you guys embarked on and adding a live, um, a, live, uh, a live studio instead of reporting live as an insert. Your group then must then include or consist of five to seven members. One being the camera operator, one has to operate sound, one has to write the script and the AV script, one the floor manager for the live area where you guys will be shooting and one editor in the control room so five to seven matters guys um seven members of the group what is it that is worthy and necessary for you guys to note down right you guys may have one or two anchors so don't have three presenters at once where you are limited to only one or two anchors uh, and another important aspect is none of your production members who will be serving as part of the creative uh, creative crew can serve as, as members of the production because imagine if the DOP or the cinematographer or the camera operator has to serve as, uh, as a news anchor, then the production process is compromised. The vision and the visual aspect is compromised. So make sure that um, all of these um, actors that are best suited, that you believe are best suited for your particular productions are then um, separate from your crew members. You can source talent from Boston Media House. You can source talent from different major groups that are not playing um, quintessential roles in the production making processes, but they'd rather play a side back, um, um, what do you call a role within the, the act of the production, right? 
Um, the next aspect, guys, is um, anchors need to look into the camera at least uh, to close the camera. Eyeline is crucial in broadcasting. We talked about composition. We talked about eyeline. We talked about keyframing. We talked about the rule of thirds. So I know that you guys are familiar with regards to placing the subject and the subject in relation to their environment. So think about composition. Think about headspace. Think about the color. And think about all these creative choices that you will you will be embarking on as a part of the visual aspect medium in telling your story, right? Uh, group members need to have a minimum of two camera operators, right? A minimum of two camera operators. Don't have four camera operators and don't operate with one because it will be a great load on you guys when you guys um have to do these things, right? Uh, please take note that your group decides to edit after the live recording in the separate suits in block B. We'll have to book time with Ember from Boston. So Ember is actually who the lady who is in charge of the, the studio as well as the gear as well as so forth. So if you guys need to um, email or book a studio time to edit some of your work, please book it at um, with the lady Ember at boston.ca in advance. When we say in advance, we mean a week in before you actually want to embark on your um, particular productions, guys. So the following elements must be added into your three to five minute breaking news show. One must be an opening jingle, which is a soundtrack um, uh, and a breaking news logo. Because most of you guys in your previous um assessments did not create the logos for these things so uh, maximum of these logos is 15 seconds as indicated on the on the on the brief appropriately placed strap lines that appear on the screen four seconds for each anchor so each anchor um should have straps there uh, their names uh, as well as their same name so that people are familiar with regards to their faces um, the third bulletin digitally inserted background using uh, the white infinity curve, which must be aligned to the look and feel of the broadcasting news show. What are we referring to when we speak of this? Guys, uh, make sure that the white balance is set to your desired production. If you want your white balance at 5.6, let it be at 5.6 for all the cameras. If you want your ISO to be on 800, 400, or 1.2, that's on you guys and with regards to how you guys want to film it. What the style, the stylistic conventions. Remember the fourth component of communication is aesthetics. So what is the color composition? What is the ideal look that you're going for if when shooting um, uh, a broadcast journalism as, as part of a content category with regards to a news show? What is the look and feel? What is the style? Are your anchors wearing formal? Do they look presentable? Where is the studio set up? Um, is there enough head space? Um, do, is it an important matter? Do you want to shoot it in black and white? What era is it set on? Is it set in 2021? Is it set in 2050? Is it set in 1999? Because all these aspects add to the component of aesthetic elements and it adds into the look and feel of your production. So you must also, guys, have a floating screen behind anchors which indicates the story uh being repeated on or being reported on excuse me with regards to that so most of the time when i saw um having seen some of your productions some were good some were great uh, uh others need um certain areas of development but one of the things that um we struggle with uh, as lecturers and uh, consumers is we don't know what the subject matter is about. So being able to tell us what the subject matter is about or on the floating screen to say, if you're dealing with tsunamis in South Africa, write tsunamis in South Africa. If you're dealing with load shedding, load shedding in South Africa and so forth. Also complete the appropriate as well end credit for your production because without title sequences and end credits, we don't know who is actually necessarily involved in the production so just be mindful of these things guys because uh when you have editing people i mean just imagine having to uh watch a movie you don't know when is the beginning when is the end because credits serve an important role of indicating direction direction with regards to the film or, or the story rather if credits were to come just imagine having to go to the theaters and to the cinema and you watched and you see credits <laughs> playing in the middle of the story 
that would not play out very well because stories do not stand in the middle. So uh, having a title sequence introduces the news broadcast journalism into, into its sphere of influence. Having a title sequence also indicates position. Which position are you playing in this particular role and the production? What kind of role is it? And is it important in that particular aspect? So think about these things, guys, when you are um, um, creating your 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 production your final exported breaking news show must be uploaded on youtube remember guys youtube when i speak spoke about youtube links make sure that you don't create different youtube links for your production create the one youtube link that i can access because this is a team a reflection of the team work as well as the crew so if you are all going to uh, send me links, then I'll, it's going to confuse me because I don't know which link to follow. Certain people had to create the links that are not where there's no content in, in, in the YouTube channel. So it just makes my job easier. It makes your job even easier. So think about these links, guys, when you are creating your shows, right? Um, uh, the documents to be handed by each member of the group. So don't forget, guys, your standard television cover page your music cue sheet, as well as your three-page or five-page um, uh, reference list. But before we get into that, guys, planning your studio shoot. It is crucial that your group plans the studio shoot well ahead of time and follow the booking procedure set out by Miss Ember, who happens to be the, the studio manager, who is also the studio manager in her new office um, um, situated across the street. So she can be reached either in her email at embus at boston.co.za. If you guys need a consultation with me, you're more than welcome to book a consultation with me so that we can have chit chat. But without wasting any more time, guys, um, I want to get into the quintessential parts of composition uh, as well as um, what we spoke about earlier on during this lesson to be able to say, okay, fine. What is the casting agency say? What is the story about? Um, why is it so interesting to tell the story? But before we get into that, let's talk about cinematic composition. What is composition? Composition involves style, it involves medium of storytelling, it involves the environment, it involves the look and feel, as well as the color of your production. So let's go deeper into what we um, should learn with regards to the, the cinematic composition with regards to the filmmaking. Hey guys, Justice here with TomorrowsFilmmakers.com, the largest online film academy in the world. And today we're going to be talking about cinematic composition. Now, composition is a fancy term for what is in the frame and where is it located. And it might sound simple, but a certain frame can be much more appealing to a viewer than others and also much more cinematic. Now, inside our full course, we have a six hour long cinematography course taught by Chris Kimlin, who has been the director of photography on many different feature films, and he takes you in depth on everything you need to know about cinematography. Now, we've been selling our film course successfully for years with an $800 price tag. We've had over 4,000 students join, but right now we are doing something we have never done before, and we are running an insane sale of only $97. Our entire lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 film course for only $97. And I'm not even joking. If you want to take advantage of this crazy deal, you can check out our website in the link below and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com to learn more. But in this training, I'm going to give you guys my eight steps that I take to make sure that I have great composition. And the great thing is you can do this with any camera that you have, a DSLR, cell phone, or pretty much anything. You don't need to buy some expensive lights or a Ronin S or an expensive lens to get more cinematic images. All you have to do is watch this video and apply these steps to your filmmaking. Now, the first rule that all of you guys need to apply is the rule of thirds. Now, the rule of thirds is a very well-known technique in the filmmaking world that you might be familiar with, but you also might not be using it properly. In a nutshell, it is scientifically proven that our eyes are drawn to these four intersecting points of the frame not the direct center, but these four corners. So by placing our subject on those four corners, it looks very much appealing and much more cinematic to the audience. 
Watch any Hollywood movie and you will notice that the main subjects are almost always on one of these intersecting points. Now the center of the frame is always reserved for subjects with authority. If your subject is teaching or has more authority, you can put them in the center of the frame. That's why all master classes and other teaching videos, including one like this, are always placed in the middle. It just automatically gives your subject more authority in whatever he's talking about and makes it look like this is the main subject I need to be listening to this person. Now, if you have a subject looking into the camera but off to one side, it doesn't feel quite as compelling as if they're in the center of the frame. But if your subject is not doing that, always put them on the rule of thirds. For landscapes or horizons, place them on one of the two lines going across and you will have an appealing image. The great thing is pretty much all cameras have a rule of thirds overlay built in so you can have the rule of thirds on the back of your camera to get great composition with whatever camera you have. Something as simple as placing your subject on the rule of thirds can completely change your image. Number two is balance. Inside your frame, you can have one side more heavy than the other and the audience can actually feel it. Like in interviews, if you have your subject to one side and also a picture frame on the same side as your subject, your image is going to start to feel unbalanced and very heavy to one side. And even if the audience doesn't know what feels wrong, they just know that something feels off. You can either move that picture frame to the other side or just add something to balance out the image like a lamp. This looks much more balanced and much more cinematic. And when it comes to composition, I try to have something on the other side of my frame to balance out my subject at all times. And it doesn't have to be something huge, and it also doesn't need to be horizontal. It can also be balanced vertically or diagonally. Whether it's a building, a statue, even a flower, something in the frame to balance the image or your shot will start to look really heavy to one side. You can obviously apply this to interviews and talking head videos, but you can also apply this to weddings, real estate, and all other types of videos. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure that you have balance in your frame. Number three is depth. You can create depth in many different ways, but one way is to shoot with a lower aperture. Not only will it make your image have more depth by blurring out the background, but it will also make it more cinematic and can also remove any distractions from your audience. This shot looks great, but you had no idea that there was something distracting in the background because we removed the distraction by shooting in a lower aperture. By blurring out the background, we create depth and separate our subject from the background. Another simple way to create depth is to simply pull your subject away from the background. It might seem simple, but I've seen many filmmakers film interviews up against a wall, giving your image absolutely no depth and it doesn't look cinematic. If I have to film an interview in a small room, I will inconvenience myself in order to have depth in my image. I'll push myself and the cameras as far in a corner as possible to bring my subject as far away from the background as possible. You can also add something interesting in the foreground to create depth. And by placing something in the foreground, we're able to not only show movement much easier, but it creates depth in our image and allows us to kind of shoot through it. It doesn't have to be anything large like a person or an object. It could be something small like leaves or plants or coming around from behind something as more of a reveal. We have our subject, the foreground, and the background creating depth. Number four is leading lines. These are simply natural lines in your composition that lead your audience to your subject. They can be found in everyday objects like hallways, landscapes, bridges, and they simply draw in your audience's attention to your subject. Now, they use leading lines in Hollywood all the time to bring attention to something. In USA's Mr. Robot, in this building, our subject always knows where he needs to go, and we as an audience know where he needs to go by the leading lines throughout the scene. But when our main character gets lost, what happens to those leading lines? They are gone. The character doesn't know where to go, and we as an audience don't know where he needs to go because there are no leading lines leading our eyes to the subject or the direction he should go. 
Something as simple as lines in the frame can lead our eyes towards a subject or away from the subject. So look for leading lines in your image to draw the attention of the audience. Some are very obvious like staircases or a handrail, but some can be even more subtle, like the top of a picnic table. The tablecloth works great, but removing the tablecloth so we have those lines on the top pointing towards our subject really make a difference. Number five is symmetry. As humans, we love order and we love to see something symmetrical. It looks appealing to us and very cinematic. Now, symmetry is everywhere. Windows, stairs, escalators, I mean, it is everywhere. Symmetry also doesn't take much effort to get. Looking at a person one way might look fine, but you might be able to just move the camera slightly to frame the shot in a way that's more symmetrical. This shot not only looks very symmetrical because of the building, but even has leading lines straight to our subject. All of this was done by barely moving the camera. So look around and find symmetry. Frame your shot and compose it properly to get the most natural and most cinematic project you've ever made. Number six is a dominant subject. If I critique a student's video, one of the main problems I see most often is that there is no dominant subject. You want to use all of these steps we just talked about to draw your audience towards the subject. But if the audience doesn't even know what the subject is, then you've completely failed in what you were trying to do. And having a dominant subject doesn't mean that you can't do a wide angle shot and have to be close up on their face. It just means that when an audience looks at an image, they need to know exactly where their eyes need to go. They need to know exactly what they're supposed to be looking at. First thing is to fill the frame. Way too often people have empty space that is unnecessary. Now some people will say, oh, it's artistic. No, it's not, it's distracting. You can be artsy and not distracting. Having this as your main subject, but this is in your frame, this is not artsy, this is sloppy. And most of the time, it's just a simple mistake and they don't fully fill the frame. So please, fill the frame and get rid of all unnecessary dead space. Number two is when you fill the frame, fill it with things that aren't distracting. If we have lots of empty dead space, I would frame it so that you remove some of the dead space. But if you needed to actually fill that frame, if we add something really bright or with movement that's gonna be distracting, our audience is going to be confused. We have a dominant subject by shooting at a lower aperture, using symmetry and leading lines to bring attention to our subject and removing all dead space in the frame. Number seven is headroom or leading room. Have you ever heard the filmmaking phrase, hey, give them some breathing room? This is what they mean. First is headroom. This is the space from the top of the frame to the top of your subject's head. In an interview, you typically want to have your subject's eyes about two thirds from the top of the frame. And this means that you want to have some room above their head. You don't want their head to be all the way at the top of the frame. And on the flip side, you don't want there to be tons of empty space above their head. Now there isn't a hard and fast rule to this because all interviews are different. And I've had interviews with people with giant hair. And so you have to determine if you want to have all of the hair in the frame or cut off some of the hair, but it's best to keep their eyes on the top line in the rule of thirds. Now leading room or looking room is the exact same thing, except it's with the direction your subject is looking. Whatever way they are looking, you want to give them looking room. And just like with headroom, having their eyes about two thirds of the frame, you would want to give your subject about two thirds of the frame to look into. The basic rule is you want more room in front of your subject than behind them. And this is why with a lot of interviews, whatever way your subject is facing, they will place their eyes on the corresponding intersecting point on the rule of thirds. This will give them the perfect headroom and leading room. And of course, this doesn't have to be with interviews, any shot or conversation that takes place. You want to give them headroom and looking room. And you would also want to do this when your subject is moving. You want to anticipate the movement without just reacting to it. If a subject moves, you want to move with them with the same amount of looking room as if you weren't moving. 
you wouldn't want to react late and it look like the subject is almost pushing the frame or forcing the movement. Leading room and headroom should always be used unless number eight is actually one of my favorites and it is to break the rules. And I know we just talked about how important it is to keep some of these rules, and I'm not saying to break them for no reason, but it is very cinematic to break the rules for a specific purpose. Now, each of these rules communicates something. So to break the rules will also communicate something else. So if you break the rule, make sure it is communicating what you intended it to communicate. The King's Speech is a perfect example. It's about a man who is soon to become king, but he has a stutter. This person who should be the most powerful person in the film, he should be in the center of the frame and dominate every scene he's about to be king, is so scared to death when he meets his speech therapist. And this is because he's embarrassed by what he has. They purposefully film him with a crazy amount of headroom to show just how small and insignificant he feels. Then whenever they have a conversation, they give him no looking room at all to, again, give us the feeling of awkwardness. When he finally gains the courage, they give him looking room and they give him headroom to show that everything is back to normal. This rule was broken purposefully. One of my favorite films when it comes to composition is The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Starting out, our main character is depressed and he's a loser. And at the beginning of the film, they almost frame him out of the shot, breaking the rule of thirds by placing him at the very bottom or at the very edge of the screen. But at the end of the film, our hero is placed in the center to show progression, is to show his character development. And the contrast of these two shots is crazy. And all of it communicates a message. So as you can see, composition isn't just one step or one simple thing you can do. It's a series of steps that bring the audience's attention to our main subject because that is our goal, to show our audience exactly where we want them to look by having the most pleasing looking image and the most cinematic. But also, like we just showed you, sticking to the rules 100% can ruin creativity. And just like with all rules, they can be broken, but they must have a reason to be broken. If our subject was framed like this, but he had his life completely in order, it would feel distracting and unnecessary. So every single shot tells a story. Where you place your subject in the frame tells a story. Be purposeful with your composition, and by taking these eight steps, you are guaranteed to boost the production value of your projects and achieve cinematic results. So I hope that this video has really helped you guys out. Again, if you'd like to learn every single aspect of filmmaking, be sure to check out our website at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have over a thousand training videos and over a hundred hours of content, directing, storyboarding, acting. We teach all of those as well. And like I said, so there's, that's what composition is. Uh, there's so many things that goes into composition. There's so many aspects of composition, which, which like I did say, um, indicate before, it's just a, an, another aspect or stylistic convention to be able to tell the story um, meaningfully and purposefully uh, through a visual medium. Now, going back, guys, to your assignments, uh, I hope that you guys have learned about composition. You've learned a thing or two. You'll implement composition as well as different shots, what you're seeing, the background, uh, and so forth uh, with regards to certain shots that you guys will be implementing in your shots. Now, let's go back and analyze um, this news breaking show with regards to what you're expected to do in your particular assessments and assignments, guys, right? Um, so in your assignments, uh, the beginning of this, guys, as you guys can see here, um, we've got the news logo and we've got uh, a background song that's playing at the uh, at this um, in the background, right? So um, this also indicates that news are coming over. These are news. It alludes to the style, the form, as well as the content category that you guys are expected to then do. So always remember this when you guys are shooting your news live shows. Logo in the beginning title sequence, uh, a song at the back. Good morning, yo. No, oh, guys, uh, I think this is a wrong one. Um, excuse me for that. 
uh, let me just Google one. Let me, let's actually go to the internet and actually um, uh, check out uh, and analyze some of these aspects of uh, uh, news, news shows. Uh, let's see if I don't have here. Okay, I'll just go to ENCA. Uh, let's look at ENCA and see how they actually do it, right? Just as an example for what your is um, responsible your your production. Hold this light bulb. Tell the High Court in Johannesburg will hear the DA's application to make public records of the ANC Kader Deployment Committee dating back to the first of January 2013. The DA says it wants to provide complete transparency. So guys, this is what we call a live area. So this live area is where your news anchor is actually sitting. Look how professional she looks like. Look at the background. Look at composition. Remember, guys, the rule of thirds. Uh, imagine uh, those imaginary lines. There's one line here, one line here, and different dots here. Where you place your character is where the eye is actually drawn. So think about that when you think about composition when, when it comes to filming your productions. There's also the time factor. What time is it? In this, this because we're streaming this live, this is 9.41. So also so allude to the stylistic convention of 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 your uh, broadcast journalism um, aspects as you can see here stage uh, blackout stage four this is what's currently happening in our country because news serve an informative role so what is the role of your production if you are dealing with the subject matter of uh women menstrual leave write it down here if that's the most important part so that we know exactly what we're dealing with right as you can see here, down here, there's news strips all below um, um, here so that um, uh, it correlates with what the, the news anchor is actually saying. DA wants ANC record made public. Okay, we want to know. Okay, this is the headline for the story. So think about these headlines when you are, when you are um, filming your productions, logos as well put in your logos where they need to be and add these strips so that you can allude to the stylistic convention of the news breaking show. The chairs the deployment committee between 2013 and 2018. But let's talk about this now, legal experts that is Umila Lukigadala, who joins me now uh, to take this conversation further. Umila, thank you for your time and uh, good morning to you. I mean, we, we've heard about, we heard a lot about here. Now they are moving on to Umila who is actually um, going to be interviewed. Uh, in an external point through either a live feed or it could be maybe perhaps uh, through 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 a telephone. So, guys, this is also another stylistic convention that the news actually do. Uh, remember, with technological advancements now, we are able to actually stream um, people through telephone calls, through video calls, through Skype, through. Uh, Slack and through Zoom and many mediums of communication. And this aspect, this person is reporting um, with regards to the matter. She's part of the interviewees of this particular matter. So uh, this one is um, actually interviewed live. This is not what's going to be part of your floor plan, guys. Uh, when we are dealing with your floor plan, we need physical people basically in the studio. So remember you did your inserts live. So this is what you guys will be focusing on on this particular aspect, reporting in the news studio and actually through the prediction, um, through the editing process in the post-production stage, adding it all together, editing it well so that you can cross cut from a live studio audience to when um, the first part of your project which you shot, which is a live feed, right? So this is what you guys will, the second aspect which you guys will then be focusing on. Don't forget the time, don't forget the, 
um, then use the strips here at the bottom. Don't forget to make a well-fledged uh, floor plan and, and go and stick with the floor plan that you guys have created in your first productions. Look at the consistency when it comes to cameras. Uh, they placed this character here in the very middle of the production uh, of the shot. What is the significance factor of placing a character in the middle of the shot? The significance of placing this character in the middle of a shot is to create dimension of what we call symmetry. What is symmetry? So you are giving uh, the reporter or the news anchor a sense of authority in order to make them bigger. When you cut to a different shot, that's where you in the rule of thirds, when it comes to composition, to be able to then uh, see the the news anchor from a different perspective when it comes to editing and cutting so that the the, the, the news report is interesting when it comes to uh, where the eye is actually looking, what is the eye looking for and so forth. So think about these short sizes and short um, choices when you guys are actually shooting and shooting, cutting or intercutting in between shots. Minutes taken at the meeting uh, to be the, the agent come back and says we are a private group with these are also cutaway shots. These cutaway shots serve a qualitative purpose with regards to what is happening uh, with regards to Remember guys, cutaway shots are also important with regards to, to adding dimension, color, adding composition and not to bore the audience because if we're going to talk about the DA and the ANC, it's worthy to have a cutaway shots of these meetings, of these public records that the DA is demanding to make uh, public or for the ANC to go public. So it's also adding a story, an additional layer to the story of the field reporting insert. So these are some of the aspects that I want you guys to look out for when you are actually shooting your productions and so forth. So let's just watch this for one more, two more minutes so that you guys understand and qualitatively what you have to do because now you understand the story aspect of things. This goes in conjunction to, to Cyril Ramaphosa, to the subject matter that they are talking about while Mpumelelo, the legal aspect, is actually on the phone. We were talking about casting earlier on. What is the role of casting? Yeah, always know that, okay, we see the costume, we see, but can this person speak well? Are they speaking like journalists? Are they well informed about the subject the matter? Think about those things when you are dealing with casting. When you're dealing with casting and auditioning, you must audition for the part of a journalistic approach. Do they have a journalistic approach? Can we hear them? Are they well articulated and so forth? So think about these aspects, guys. Don't just cast anybody for the sake of casting. Um, think about casting from a journalistic perspective, from an informative perspective. This is a person who's uh, serving an informative role to the country and to the nation. How do they speak? Are they well? Are they clear? Do they know much about the subject matter? Are they well concise? Can they um, 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 conduct an interview well? Are there points of um, um, engagement in a logical and systematic way? Uh, think about these aspects when you are casting for your productions. But nevertheless, guys. Information, uh, communication, that being via WhatsApp or This is the aspect of what you guys will be dealing with in your productions. Uh, I hope that you guys uh, are able to um, pull this off um, uh, meticulously so because now you understand, okay, this is the second aspect, the live area show, 
of where the journalist is taking place. What is the composition? How is the background looking? What can we add? What did we miss in the first production that we can add on this particular production? So those are some of the elements that I wanted to share with you guys here today. But um, since we're talking about the casting process and storytelling, I wanted to share with you another video, guys, with regards to casting um, the appropriate person, what a story means to us, uh, not only in a film setting, but also in a documentary setting as well. So let's just go into these particular lessons so that you guys uh, get a quintessential um, um, understanding of um, this is also in conjunction to you being a film director and a producer casting and understanding the story and the importance of casting and the importance of having to oversee that production and tell that story through those characters and then we'll get to mark on a movie a story. director has to know a thousand different jobs whether it be writing story lighting sound makeup working with actors editing so on and so forth when it comes down to it what do you think is the most important job of a director the most important job to me is really simple to think about it. First of all, the director of a film is a storyteller. Like everybody who he's working with is there to help tell one story. So the director's primary job is to be the shepherd of that story, take care of the story and tell the story as clearly, as honestly, and as authentically as possible. <clears throat> I say story, not the script. The script, which we can talk about later, is a step towards getting the story told. In terms of your question, what you're asking about, in terms of the story being told, at the center of the story, the most important part of the story, are the characters. It's the characters who tell the story. Not the cinematography, not the production design, not all those other elements. All those other elements are a support system to the story. So the director needs to be focusing on the story and then on the characters and the strength of the performances, the authenticity of the performances, the clarity of characters, the clarity of relationships, the clarity of the journey of each character is really crucial in order to tell the story well. That's the primary focus of a director. If a director can't do that or loses sight of that, the story is going to start to wobble. And we've seen that a lot, stories which wobble because simply because of performance, even though a lot of the other elements may be brilliant, like CGI and special effects and all that. All that stuff is beautiful. It's wonderful. But it's not the story. Is the story wobbling because the actors are wrong for the part? When you say shepherding the story where would that get lost where would the director in the course of let's say a 14-hour day on set working with actors lose that can you give some examples of what things could happen or how things could happen okay you brought up two things what could happen in a 14-hour day and then you brought up a casting question so there are two questions <laughs> you know if the actor is right it, i'm going to go back to the casting first first of all casting which is really crucial and very often we've all seen films where we feel the casting although understandable is not right doesn't feel like that actor is bringing me closer to the character and many times that actor is a star or whatever so you can understand why <clears throat> so the casting is really important that we the audience the goal is that we the audience lose sight of the actor and are only watching the character. And many times the actor, even the power of the actor, or the, the um, career of the actor, or a lot of other things can get in the way of us connecting with the character. One more thing on casting, you can cast someone who can't seem to get to the character, just nothing to do with star power. So casting is really important. Find someone who can actually access that character now in a 14 hour day so let's say in a 14 hour day we're shooting a couple of scenes or one scene or whatever we're doing in that day you ask how the director can lose the sight of the shepherding of the story <clears throat> very easily very easily and i can tell you as a director and having directed a lot of films and having worked on a lot of films you can see it happen it's what a friend of mine mark Rydell, who i worked with a lot called the big machine the big machine is the filmmaking process. Cameras, lights, crew, all of it. It's huge. 
you've been on a set, you know what it's like. It's enormous. And the director is sort of the leader, the guy that, that everybody's looking to. And what can happen is the director gets <clears throat> distracted by all the challenges, everything he has to do. I'm not saying he doesn't have to do that. He has to do all that and can lose sight of what is most important. You're shooting that close-up of that actress at that moment. What's most important? The lighting? No. The background? No. The special effects? No. What's most important is that performance. I heard once on a set, a director, after they had shot a moment, turn to the script supervisor and say, did she say all the words? And the script supervisor says, yes. He says, okay, good. Move right on. His, his criteria was, did she say all the words? Not was that the performance we need? In other words, can the director keep their focus on the performance? Because when it comes down to the film and we see it on the screen, what do we see? The performance. The big thing that Mark Rydell told me about is you can be on the set and watching, oh, that was great. That was wonderful. You can even be in dailies and watch it later and go, great, wonderful. You can see it at home later and go, huh. What happened to great and wonderful? The machine is taken away. A lot of directors get their energy from the big machine. From the fact that there's a crew and there are lights and energy. Everybody goes quiet. Everybody's listening. Wow. They're, they get excited by the fact that they are shooting the film. And that excitement will go away. And then you look at the shot and you go, what? I thought it was great when we did it. What happened? What happened was there's an energy around you which is now gone. So a director's job is, can you shut down the big machine? Can you focus your attention onto just what that actress is doing, what she's giving to you? Can you see only that? Now, that's really hard. And one other aspect of this, assuming that you've been working with this actress a lot, and you've rehearsed, and you've discussed this intentionally, so you know what you're going for, and you know what she's going for. Can you watch her in that moment, not only shut down the big machine, but can you watch her in that moment as if you've never seen her before? And you're seeing what she's doing for the first time. That's hard. It's the hardest thing a director has to do. Mark, on a movie, a director has to know a thousand different jobs, whether it be writing, story, lighting, sound, makeup, working with actors, editing, so on and so forth, when it comes down to it, what do you think is the most important job of a director? Okay, the most important job to me is really simple. You think about it. First of all, the director of a film is a storyteller. In fact, everybody who he's working with is there to help tell one story. So the director's primary job is to be the shepherd of that story take care of the story and tell the story as clearly, as honestly, and as authentically as possible. So guys, um, that's, um, that was advice from Mark Travis, who's created amazing Hollywood movies, um, significant, uh, significant um, movies of our centuries. And, 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 and I, 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 I think it's interesting to take home that um, the secondary aspect of all these things um, is not the cinematography. It is not the VFX. It is not the sound. It is not the music. It is the character. So I can never ever stress enough how the, the performance aspect, which is the second part of components of communication is so important in casting the right people to carry out the job correctly. So I hope you guys have learned a lot with regards to the pressures that are involved when it comes to uh, film directing and, and some of the aspects that, uh, yeah, technical aspects that is involved with when it comes to directing and, 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 and shooting and being a producer and having to tell the story. But the most important part, guys, is telling the story. Do you serve that purpose well of telling that story? What is the story? Uh, I think uh, in having to understand the story, you must ask yourself the first question. What is the story that I'm telling? Why am I telling it? 
and who am I telling it to? Those three aspects will give you the vision of that story. Why is it so important for me to tell that story? Why am I telling it? Who am I telling it to? For what purpose? What purpose do you believe that the story will have on the audience? What's the impact? But another aspect of it, which is the second element, is what is not the story you are telling? So when you are covering a news um, gathering service, you are reporting on a story. So you need to carry these stories with care, utmost care. So what is the story that you are not telling? Once you are clarified what story you are not telling, then you are getting closer into understanding the story and the modus operandi of the story with the characters that you are actually using to tell that particular story. I'll go into the ATEM system to see how the black, uh, black magic um, uh, operates and so forth. But before I get into that, guys, um, let me actually get into that right now. Um, to get into um, the, the quintessential parts of the black magic, just to remind you guys how it works in studio, the hyperdeck and recording processes and so forth. Uh, uh, so let's do that uh, before we get to the end of the lesson. Uh, right now we'll be testing our hyperdeck uh, studio two and where you put the drive. Hyperdex Studio Mini and Hyperdex Studio 2 set up as testing. Remember guys, these are Hyperdex systems. Remember in the studio, we have four Hyperdex. So Hyperdex 1, which is um, um, Hyperdex 1 and 2. This one is the Mini Hyperdex. So it only has two slots. These slots are what is being recorded when you guys are filming in the studio. So all these Hyperdex, when you take them out and take off this disc, all the, it, it serves as a purpose of uh, 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 an SD card, basically, for, 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 big, for big material when you're using the live switcher in the studio and in the editing lab. So just to remind you guys of that. Uh, right now, we'll be testing our HyperDeck uh, Studio 2 and HyperDeck Studio Mini together with our uh, Studio uh, TV Studio HD uh, with the switcher. But first, we need an SSD drive for uh, playback and storage. Right now, we're using the SanDisk Stream SSD. Then we will put it on slot one. Then we'll format the drive. To format, we need to go into the settings, then scroll into the SSD, enter, and choose the slot where you put the drive. Then you have two options. Either you will use the HFS or the XFAT. Uh, right now, I'll be using the XFAT so that it can be uh, recognized by both Mac and Windows computers. The purpose of formatting, guys, is sometimes um, when you get into the studio, a lot of people use, a lot of students use this system. So it's always nice and, and always advisable to clear memory all the time, just to uh, empty it out uh, on the hyperdex. So uh, do that and I advise that all the time so that you don't have a lot of content that confuses you because such certain students get there and then their production are mixed up in, this, in the SD card. So clear it out and format it out on the right and correct hyperdeck. Format the SSD. There you go. And then next, uh, we will uh, show you the layout of our uh, cabling of all the all the equipments. Uh, to do that, we need to uh, connect all the equipments into the network switcher or uh, router. So 
here's the layout. Once you do that, we also need need to uh, physical cabling of all the equipments for playback. So in this particular setup, uh, all the video outputs of the switcher hyperdex. But to configure the IP address or uh, the hyperdex, and we will put it enter it into the settings of you know what guys um uh, video switcher we'll go Hello? through this uh in studio the next time because um this video of the hyperdex system I'm, I'm not happy with it i would show you here but i don't have the system on my particular computer so when we go to the studio uh next week uh, i'll show you guys how to do this i know i've shown you guys um how to do this but i'll go through it uh once again guys i hope you guys have enjoyed um this particular lesson i hope uh, you've learned quite a lot and um i'll see you guys on the next class uh being tomorrow great stuff and enjoy the rest of your day